This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hey everybody and welcome back to another map first impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at the second map included with the Farming Simulator 22 game, Haute Bay La Rune. This is a southern French map and I'm going to read you a bit of the blog post that was released on November 11th. Blog post says, If you've ever dreamed of idyllic vineyards striping the hillsides of your land, Haute Bay La Rune is the right place to build your farm. This map was inspired by several areas of southern France. Enjoy traditional gondolas, a castle, and many other sites to discover. Hillside areas are perfect to plant grapes and olive groves. So with that, let's go ahead and jump on in. But before we get the map loaded up, this video is brought to you by William Chapman. Thank you for being a farm baron. Now I will say, if you load this map up in farm manager or start from scratch. You're gonna find the main farm completely empty of vehicles and buildings, which is a little different than what we saw on Elm Creek. So if you load this map up in farm manager or start from scratch, again, the farmhouse will be gone. The easy shed will be gone. The water point, as well as the hayloft. The silo and the silage bunker all are gone. The only thing that remains is the, basically the painted land and the trees. We are loaded up here on new farmer mode and let's go ahead and just take a look at the PDA. We zoom on out and then take a look at the lands area. You'll see we start out by owning the main farm and it fields 38, 41, and 40. 38 and the main farm are acquired together. Field 40 and 41 are also individually separate. Now if we zoom on out, we do have a biogas plant that we can buy on this map. I went ahead and checked it out. It's right down here. Unlike 19, we can't pick it and buy it from here. We have to buy it at the biogas plant, but we could buy it for 1.5. That's right, $1.5 million. Let's take a look at some of the other field prices around here. Big field 26. 1.1 million dollars. Yeah, already this map has fields larger than Elm Creek, which is quite interesting. Field 30, 629,000 dollars. Field 15, 391,000 dollars. Field one, a little smaller field, but it includes a fair bit of land, 267,000 dollars. So overall, the land prices, as compared to field sizes, feel like they're more expensive here on this map than on Elm Creek. We've got a fair bit of land up here that is lightly populated with trees, a lot of rocky, hilly territory, $921,000. The main real forest on the map is here to the north center, $926,000. If we go ahead and take a look, we've got all of our crops that are available to us here on Farm Sim 22. Wheat, barley, oat, canola, corn, sunflower, soybeans, potatoes, sugar beet, sugar cane, cotton, sorghum, grapes, olives, poplar, grass, and oilseed radish. Now, if we move on down the line here, and we get to our prices screen, you'll see that we have multiple sell points for wheat, barley, oat, canola, sorghum, grapes, olives, sunflowers, soybeans, corn, potatoes, sugar beets, Cut sugar beets are going to be sold at the biogas plant and at the animal dealer. We have one sell point for cotton at the spinnery. Of course, if we own the spinnery, we can then further process the cotton into fabric. We have multiple sell points for sugar cane, eggs, wool, milk, wood chips, silage. Grass can be sold at the animal market as well as hay and straw, also at the biomass heating plant. We have three buy points for fuel. We have multiple sell points for flowers, bread, cakes, butter, cheese, fabric, clothes, sugar, honey, cereal, sunflowers, oil, canola oil, olive oil, raisins, grape juice, lettuce, tomatoes, strawberries, 
chocolate planks at the carpentry shop. And the planks are made from the sawmill. Furniture to the farm shop. Manure and slurry will go to the biogas plant. So we have three lime buy points on this particular map. And then stones can be sold at the debris crusher. So we do start out with a decent list of starting equipment. All is well maintained and has very little hours on it. None of it is leased. We do not have any animals at the start and we do have contracts available on the map. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our starting equipment. Start out with the Steyr 8150, 135 horsepower small tracker. The Valtra 8750 and Massey Ferguson 3670 in the medium tractor category. So they range in horsepower from 170 to 190. We have the Top Liner 4090H Harvester. It is paired up with the 4090H Grain Header. We have a 19, or sorry, 2017 pickup truck. The Welger DK115 trailer. We have the EG3-9 Rabe Cultivator, the HK25 plus NS3030 Cedar slash Power Harrow. Then we have the Dutes Far 4090 trailer and a pair of front weights. Oh, with that, let's go ahead and do a little bit of a farm tour. It's not going to take very long at all. So we have our farmhouse with our... I guess I'm going to call it our, uh, our sleep trigger, but really... In 22, we're telling it when we want to wake up, not when we, how long we want to sleep. So that is a little bit different than FS19. So we can sleep the entire day if we want to skip an entire day. We just come here and say, I want to wake up the next day at 8 a.m. Now over here in the garage, we have a wardrobe trigger that we can go in and change our player character's wardrobe, should we so wish. We do have a water point right here. We have the easy shed. We have a hay loft to store our hay and straw. So we have our dump point right there. And then we have our fill point right here. I have to say this hay loft is just immaculate looking. Absolutely beautiful. We do have a silage bunker right here, so we can start making silage. We can see that trigger pop up right there. And then we have our farm silo right here. Currently, it is empty, so we do not get any crops at the start. So that is the main farm. I'm going to go ahead and get set up to do the fly around. We'll fly around the map and take a little bit of an aerial tour. Then we'll come back to the shop, get our Mahindra, and do our typical drive tour where we'll hit all of the cell points and factories. Now, I will say, when I was looking around this map earlier, there doesn't appear really to be any other player farm on this map. So, thinking about the ratings of this map, the map includes eight production facilities built into the map, eight of 12, I know on the Elm Creek video I said eight or a n 10 of 11 for that particular map. Well, what I was missing was there isn't a placeable sawmill, and I was going off the placeable factory count, uh, but there are technically 12 production facilities built into standard FS-22. The sawmill doesn't appear to have a placeable option. So that's why I was off by one count. So Elm Creek has 10 of 12. This particular map has eight of 12. They include the biogas plant, the sawmill, the spinnery, the grain mill, the bakery, carpentry, and a grape processing facility, which I think is a little interesting that the map is kind of pitched and sold as a great place for grape vineyards and olive groves, but the oil factory isn't pre-placed 
Now, that's not saying that you can't place it on your own. You'd have to find a piece of land somewhere, maybe sacrifice a bit of a field in order to place that, but it's not saying that you can't. It's just, it's kind of interesting that that isn't included with the map because of the big push, I guess you could say, with respect to olives and this particular map. So the map has lots of bridges. Uh, there's a river that basically cuts through the map and uh, really splits the whole map up into two parts. And as such, there are several bridges. Here we are coming across the southern portion of the map and we're coming up to one of the train silos, transfer stations, directly below here. In addition to that, we also have our Lime Station. As you can see a little bit further to the west, we have our BGA. This is a one kilowatt megawatt 1000. We'll have to look at it. One of our fuel points is directly below here. So just like the Elm Creek BGA, I think this is pretty much the same one. We have our digestate output. So a nice large shed for any vehicles or machinery. We have two dump stations for our digester. And then we walk up to the wrench and we can buy the one megawatt BGA for $1.5 million. It also includes two large three-sided bunkers. This map includes several hot air balloons. That is one of the unique visual aspects of this map compared to Elm Creek. And you may also notice that a lot of the trees on this map are completely different than the trees that we see over on Elm Creek. And that really does give this map a completely different, unique feel as compared to Elm Creek. So we make our way up the western side of the map. We have kind of diverging or converging bridges here. We've got our road bridge and our train bridge as the train then loops kind of across the middle of the map. Again, just like Elm Creek, this train does not loop the entire map. It comes in from outside of the map border and exits from outside the map border. There's also a cell point that would require you to load the train and send it off, similar to Elm Creek. As we come up the further up the western side of the map, we have our grape factory over here to the right. We can see the observatory directly in front of us. We are coming up a bit of an incline. The way the map overall is laid out, the area south of the river is far flatter than the area here to the north of the river. A lot of this area up here is really just decorative. And during one of the map um, trailer videos, I had made a comment that I thought this area here would be a really great potential area should giants ever move into um, fruit trees, that this would be a really interesting place that you could have a, uh, a fruit tree orchard set up. So we have our observatory there. It does open up at nighttime. I have to say I was a little bit disappointed in seeing that pop open because it literally just pops open. There isn't a smooth opening door animation on that. So that was a little, little bit of a disappointment. As I've said, you know, we've, we've seen probably half of the map at this point from the aerial level. There really isn't clearly defined areas where a player could possibly build their own their own farm again without really digging into existing farmland 
We got a cell point down below there. So we've come across the top of the map. We are making our way over here to the one primary forest on the map for forestry operations. And to that end, the building to our right over here is the biomass heating plant that will accept wood chips, I believe. There are 20 collectibles on this particular map, so that is also a unique difference between this base map and Elm Creek. Elm Creek has 100 collectibles, whereas this one only has 20. We have our sawmill and carpentry shop below, I believe. I believe our mill is directly ahead, but we're going to get we're going to get a lot more detail on that when we do our drive around. We have our spinnery directly here on top of the hill for our wool and cotton operations. If you wish to further process your fabric, you're going to have to place down a tailor because that is not included as a pre-placed production area. Come over here to one of the more iconic, I guess, scenic aspects of the map, and that is the old castle ruin up here on top of the hill. And I would say this is really the only other area that really stands out to me as possibly being a player farm but it's so tight and without a fair bit of I think landscaping around it you're not really going to be able to make much use of this particular space because these buildings as they were with some of the other player farms in Elm Creek these this buildings are not functional from the standpoint of they do not have operable doors so it'd be really nice if these doors opened to give you some level of storage it'd be nice if these doors over here opened to give you some level of storage but they just do not but they do have really nice texturing to the building but as you can see with a little bit of clearing the land of trees and some landscaping, you could probably make a bit of a usable farm up here on top of the hill as a secondary area, but you would have to work around all of these structures because all of these structures are permanently built into the map. So you leap down here by the river, we have our gondolas. A few cell points and other points of interest running here along the river and then directly in front of us is our final destination for the aerial tour and that is going to be the vehicle shop vehicle shop also has a gas station conveniently right next to it Let's go ahead and get our Mahindra and get started with the, the drive around. Here at the shop, we do have our customized maintenance, repair, and sell trigger here on the side. And then the main shop trigger is directly here in front door of Armand Motors. As far as a spawn point for vehicles, I think you have a fairly large area here to spawn in a fairly large amount of vehicles for sure. So there shouldn't be too many, too much hassle in spawning large vehicles and large quantities of vehicles going forward on this particular map. Now, directly in front of us is the main player farm, and you would access that by taking this road this direction. 
We just do a little bit of in cab driving at this point. We get a little bit of a feel for the lay of the land. As I said, the areas to our north of the river are going to be far hillier than the areas south of the river. So there is our farm and then our fields our three starting fields are located right here so they do have a bit of a rolling nature to themselves I have to say I, I do agree with the description this is a very idyllic map lots of nice views scenes I think it's a little it's a little put offish from a multiplayer standpoint. It would work great for a large community based farm. As far as multiple farms, not so much because we don't have a large number of fields on this particular map. Let's go back and take a look at the PDA again and just get a decent feel for the number of fields we've got going on here. I mean, the, the 48. 48 is at quick glance the largest number I see. So 48 fields, some of them are a bit smaller than others. Some of them are extremely large. So you could, you could eat into some of the larger fields to make your own player farm if you wanted to in multiplayer. But for me, that always just feels a little, a little put offish, you know, as a virtual farmer, I don't want to be sacrificing field space for you know farm buildings and such being that this is a giants delivered map it does indeed have very well marked player triggers and interactive areas so as I had on the thumbnail I think overall this map probably has a good solid 4 out of 5 for me as far as just a you know, to give it a rating along the lines of our new map rating methodology. The only real downside to the map is the lack of multiple farms. Uh, you do get a plus. Whoa, deer. Whoa, deer. Oh, dear, the deer. Deary, deer, deers. You do get the plus that on farm manager or start from scratch, you start with a completely blank slate on the starting farm. That is rather nice for sure. I think some of the reasons why you don't do that on Elm Creek is, well, look at that there, buddy. Two of the three buildings have basements in them. So the ground is kind of welled out as a result. And if you started Without those buildings, there would be fairly big holes in the ground. So while you do get the bonus of selling the building on Farm Manager or Start From Scratch on Elm Creek, you then have to flatten the land. So that kind of negates some of that added money cost. So here we are coming down to what I think is one of the train transfer areas. So we have our fill station here. Yeah, we just have kind of rather interesting two dump stations for wheat, barley, oat, canola, sorghum, olives, sunflower, soybeans, corn, potatoes, sugar beet, sugarcane, wood chips. So we can fill from there. We have two dump stations and we have our lime fill station. Let's make our way over to the biogas plant. As you have seen by driving around here, we do have slightly different traffic on this map as compared to Elm Creek. So that is something that I think is really great in FS22 is that we have kind of unique traffic for the various areas. And we'll probably see that when it comes to mod maps and be able to deduce kind of which map maybe was the basis 
for a particular map based on maybe their unique traffic. So here we have the biogas plant. Digest a point as we saw in the driver or the flyover. Two digesters and a pair of really large silage bunkers. I think we'll take a little bit of a different path that we took with respect to the fly around. We'll come in and cut up the center of the map here. As there are a few points of interest still south of the river. Coming up here to uh, an area just north of field 28. We have our animal dealer right here. So once we have animals, we'll be able to pick them up and drop them off there. We have a selling station right here. Let's just go ahead. This is probably the selling station attached to the animal area. Yes, it is indeed. And then we have a stone crusher here behind the building. So the stone crusher, if you're not aware, is where you're going to be able to transport your stones that you collect out of your fields. You'll get a little bit of money for your effort. It's not, it's nothing that you would really write home about, but it will be maybe worth the fuel expended. Coming down here to the area right along the river. We have what might be the bakery. Let's see. The grain mill for $96,000. So that is our interactive zone to purchase and tell the factory what to do. We have our dump station and our spawn point right there. the reflections the reflections on both of the base maps so far have really just been outstanding and stellar here we have our dump station this is a factory of some sort because I saw the pallet spawn point around back Oh, this is our cheese shop. So this must be the this must be the dairy. Oh, the cheese and dairy location. Pretty neat. Looks like we got some moldy cheese in there. Only in France can you sell moldy cheese for a premium. Here we have some sticky moldy cheese. Oh, we oui, we oui, I'll buy more of that. So there we have our spawn point for our pallets. That's <laughs> that's the extent of my French impersonations. Running along the street here, we've got a really nice row of houses. I love the new 
greedy aspects of the windows. We even got some clothes hanging out to dry. Hopefully they don't fall down and uh, obstruct any driver's view. That wouldn't be the greatest now, would it? description. And this is likely the bakery. Indeed it is. $50,000. We have our dump station and our pallet spawn point right here around back. Let's go ahead and head up this direction. We have a fair bit of triggers up this road. So once again, get a little bit of a general perspective on how just the elevations and such really have changed now that we have moved to the northern side of the river. We also have completely different architecture here on the French map as compared to Elm Creek. So the different trees and the different architecture really, really do go to play towards just the overall sense that we are in completely different areas. So I believe this is the grain mill. Oh no, sorry, this is another train transfer station. So we have our fill pipe here to fill onto a trailer. We have our grain dump there. And then around the back, we have the activation zone to not only rent the train right there, Apparently I hit the rent a train button by accident. We have our train dump and fill point right here. Oh, here comes the train. So renting a train, that is a unique gameplay aspect that is part of FS 22 that we did not have in FS 19. FS-19, we could just jump to a train whenever we wanted to. We have another one of our Lime fill stations. Our train, or our grain mill, sorry, is up here. And here we are. So we have our dump station right here. Based on the other marker, I assume that we have a, okay. So we have our third lime station. So that is solely a cell point. I was mistaken on that. I was thinking that it was a a grain factory, but that is just a cell point. Let's make our way over here to the spinnery. a long 
windy road. Very nice tree-lined road. We're up here. We can look out over the majority of the map at this point. And we have our dump station. Our pallet spawn point. And then our interactive trigger for the spinnery. One of the advantages forwarded to me by the little Mahindra is the ability to just putter around any corners I need to do. Uh, see the train has showed up where I rented it, but let's just take a quick gander across the southern part of the map. And like I said, you can really get a, a good feel for the change in how the land is, is set up. The area south of the river really is a lot flatter than the area here to the north. So just a few more points of interest on our tour here. I have to say, I do like that the full-size PDA is taking less view in 22. I can leave it up. I think it helps you guys with respect to seeing where I am on the map. It helps me out significantly from getting lost, if you will, around the, uh, around the unfamiliar roads. For me, it takes far longer to to remember where I am and get a good sense of where I am on the roads than I end up spending on a map for prepping for a particular video like this. Here we have our sawmill. So we have our wood chip dump station right here we have our log stall point right there we have our pallet spawn point we have a log cell point there we have our dump station and then this is the carpentry shop so the carpentry shop will accept logs or board wood which is going to spawn here so we can take it from here and put it right there and then we're going to get furniture out of the carpentry shop Let's see if we have any sample furniture sitting around here anywhere doesn't look like it We have another train rental trigger right there. And then the other marker that was showing to the north, that is representing a cell point that is off the map, that is only reachable by the train. a fuel station to 
two more points of interest. Be curious what your all's thoughts and impressions are on Holt V. Lerun. I know I butcher that every time I say it, which is why I tend to just default to the French map. Here we are at, I believe that this is the farmer's market. So we have our dump station for our grains. And then we have our sell point here for our palleted products. And then up the hill, we have our last included factory on the map and that is our great processing facility we'll just take this dirt road up the hill so overall i would say i would rate this map as i said four out of five with really the only big tick coming down related to the lack of additional player farm areas with the whole start from scratch build your own farm concept I really feel that the player should have some options on where to start and the way this map is set up in order for a player to have those kind of options they would have to sacrifice farmland so here we have the great processing facility for $80,000 Got our pallet spawn point there, and then our dump station right there. So let me know in the comments, what do you all think of this particular map? I like it overall. I like how it has a completely different, unique feel to it as compared to the other base map, Elm Creek. I think Elm Creek rates a little bit higher than this map only because it includes multiple potential areas that a player could start their farm at and really experience the map multiple times multiple ways by farming in completely different areas and until next time happy farming